Good day everyone. We will discuss about the scenario where always on synchronous availability group with automatic failover is not failing over automatically in an event of an issue as far as the primary replica is concerned in this video. Let's get started. We'll be using this environment for uh, uh, checking this scenario. JBS AG1 and JBS AG2 or synchronous uh, replica. In case if something happens to JBS AG1, then uh, always on availability group is expected to fail over automatically to JBS AG2. And let's consider JBS AG2 is uh, the primary. And if something happens to JBS AG2, then uh, always on availability group has to fail over automatically to JBS AG1. JBS AG3 is uh, used as a uh, disaster recovery replica and it uses an asynchronous commit. We'll be uh, looking at uh, an availability group called uh, JBS AG, which has a database called JBS Wiki. And the listener for this availability group would be JBS APP. So right now, the primary replica is JBS AG2. So what we'll do now is like we will uh, uh, start with a scenario where we try to connect to uh, the listener JBS APP. And uh, when we have an error, we will basically understand why we are having this error and then we will uh, proceed on to it further. Let's try connecting to uh, the listener. So I'm uh, connecting to uh, the listener JBS APP. So let's click on connect. So uh, we are able to connect to the listener. So now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, open a new query window on the JBS Wiki database and then um, I'm going to uh, insert some data. Okay, so uh, the databases uh, are here and uh, what I'm able to see is like I'm getting in uh, a message that um, a JBS Wiki is in not synchronizing um, state. So let me click on a new query window. So if I click on the new query window, I'm able to see that um, I'm getting a message uh, that unable to access a viability database JBS Wiki because the database replica is not in primary or secondary role. Connections to an availability database is permitted only when the database replica is in primary or secondary role. So this is the uh, message that I'm getting. So I'm not able to connect to um, um, uh, the database at all. So now what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to look at um, the availability group um, 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 uh, properties. I'm basically going to open the always on availability group in the SSMS and then see what is the status right now. Okay, so I'm uh, going to close this because I'm not able to make a proper connection. So let's click on the always on availability um, folder here. And then if I see here, what I'm seeing is like uh, the availability group uh, JBS AG is in resolving state. So let me uh, open the uh, cluster manager. And then if you see here, what we are able to see is like, uh, the availability group JBS AG is basically in failed state. We will look at it why it has failed. Uh, before that, let's click on the nodes and then see if all the nodes are available. So what I'm able to see is like the current primary, which is JBS AG2 is currently down. And um, um, as per the availability group concept, we know that JBS AG1 and JBS AG2 are synchronous replicas. So when JBS AG2 went down, the availability group basically should have failed over to JBS AG1. But in our case, it did not happen. Basically, what we are seeing is like uh, the availability group is basically uh, failed here. So that is what we are seeing right now. So now what I'll do is like I will open the event viewer and then I will see if uh, we are able to see something uh, um, uh, related to this particular error. Yep. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, uh, click on application. And then um, I'm just going to uh, filter the current log only for critical error and warning. Let's look at it. So right now I don't see anything here. Yep, and uh, let me uh, check on the system. Um, 
so I don't see uh, anything uh, interesting here. The thing is like I'm connected to uh, JBS AG3, which is an asynchronous replica. So I'm not able to see anything here. But here I'm uh, looking at 6 p.m. We are basically getting a message that uh, JBS AG2 was like removed for active, for, uh, from the active failover cluster membership. We know that because uh, JBS AG2 is currently down. So what we'll do is like we will log into JBS AG1, which is um, uh, the um, uh, other um, uh, secondary replica. So uh, uh, the, as soon as the uh, JBS AG2, the current primary went down, uh, we should have um, uh, seen uh, this server JBS AG1 taking over the availability group. We did not see anything here. So what we'll do is like let's uh, uh, filter the log here and then just look for critical error and warning and see if we are able to see something interesting here. So if I see here, what I'm uh, seeing is like um, uh, we are seeing that um, uh, we are getting this message which basically tells like uh, um, uh, JBS AG is in a failed state. Uh, the failed replica uh, to read or update the persisted configuration data uh, SQL so to recover from this failure either restart uh, w. So it is basically telling like you need to restart. So basically what we are seeing is like um, um, the availability uh, group is not able to understand whether it is primary or secondary. So that's the message that we are seeing here. And we know that uh, 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 when we looked at the always on availability group, we were able to understand that um, uh, it was uh, it is basically in uh, resolving state. Yeah, so um, uh, JBS AG2 uh, is the current uh, uh, primary um, like uh, it went down and uh, it never um, um, uh, even though it went down the availability group did not uh, failed over to um, uh, JBS AG1 so that's the scenario right now so now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to generate the cluster log on JBS AG1 and then uh, let's see if we can get some details like uh, what is uh, uh, going on here yep uh, so let's look at that Okay, so let's open the PowerShell and then let's um, go to C drive temp folder and then let's execute this to generate the cluster log. Let it generate. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, uh, look at uh, this again one more time. Because what I see is like JBS AG2 server is online now. And uh, if we look at um, uh, the availability group, um, we can see that um, as soon as the server JBS AG2 came online, the availability group also uh, is online. So basically, like um, the issue is still there. We're in. Um, uh, the failover did not happen as far as the availability group is concerned. So as soon as JBS AG2 went down, instead of um, this uh, availability group JBS AG failing over to JBS AG1, it went into fail state. And as soon as JBS AG2 came online after some time, uh, the availability group uh, uh, also came online. So uh, we are generating the uh, cluster.log to get some uh, details. Uh, in the meantime, what we'll do is like let's log into JBS AG2 and then see if uh, we are able to see uh, any details uh, as far as uh, uh, the failover issue on the event viewer. So let's uh, open the event viewer and then let's uh, go to um, uh, uh, the application log and then see if we are able to get some details there. Still loading. Once it comes, we will be able to get some details there. Let's see if we can see anything before uh, jumping into uh, uh, the cluster dot log because the cluster log dot log is still generating the required data. So I'm going to uh, filter to critical warning and error here. And uh, what I'm seeing here is like we are so we have some messages here. It basically tells like. Um, uh, JBS AG is in a file state. This is the same information that we got. 
previously. Let's look at if we have something on the system logs. On the system logs, what I'm able to see is like there are many information here. There is one warning for failover clustering. Uh, this is a normal one, distributed commas. Okay, there is one event ID 1254. And uh, what we are able to see here is like, it tells that the clustered role JBSAG has exceeded its failover threshold. It has ex exhausted the configured number of failover attempts within the failover period of time allotted to it and will be left in a fail state. So this explains why uh, the automatic failover did not happen. So what is happening is like, uh, we have basically exhausted the configured number of failover attempts. And uh, since we have uh, exhausted the configured number of failover attempts, the failover the automatic failover did not happen and it left the availability group in the fail state. So this is the reason why we had uh, this problem wherein when uh, JBS AG2 went down, uh, the always on availability group did not fail over. So well, now we understand the reason why uh, the issue happened. So now what we'll do is like, we will go to the cluster administrator, then look at the uh, details as far as um, uh, this particular uh, availability group is concerned. Let's look at the failover properties and then see what is the threshold value for the failover set. So let's go to it. And then if you see here, uh, uh, right click on this and then click on properties. We have this failover tab, just click on that. And if you see here, what we have is like the maximum failures in the specified period is two and uh, the uh, period is basically six. That is, in case if uh, within six hours, if we have uh, more than two failures, then uh, anything after the second failure, the automatic failover will not happen. So this is um, uh, uh, the default value of two is here, just to um, uh, keep in mind that you shouldn't be having much of a uh, uh, failure as far as um, um, uh, the cluster resource is concerned. In case if it is uh, uh, within that six hours, if there are more than two failures, then there seems to be some problem definitely that needs to be looked upon. That's the reason after uh, two uh, uh, failures, it is uh, uh, failing instead of failing over to the other node. So in this case, what we are going to do is like, we are going to increase this by uh, another four, which is from two, we will change it to six. This is something that you can do. Um, uh, since uh, this is kind of a demo, I'm going to increase it. Even in real world scenario, if you uh, understand the failures and if you feel like uh, um, uh, you can't leave the availability group in fail state and automatic failover is required, there is no harm in increasing this particular value. And as soon as you do this, I don't think uh, you will have this problem any more time. That is like, um, um, uh, you will be able to uh, have six failures. For example, if uh, within six hours, if you have more than six failures, then again, after the sixth failure, uh, the availability group uh, cluster resource will be in fail state only. So that is something that you need to be aware of. So right now I have uh, changed this value just to look at it one more time. If you see here, I've changed it to uh, six. Let's look at the cluster log also once. Okay, the cluster logs, I think I generated. Yeah, it's generated. So let's go to um, uh, C drive temp. And then let's uh, look at um, uh, JBS AG2 cluster. Um, yep, so let's uh, wait for it to open. In the meantime, let's uh, go to the event viewer again. And then if you see here, we basically have this one, two, five, four, around uh, 6.16 uh, uh, 6, p.m. So let's concentrate the same uh, thing, uh, same time frame in the cluster.log as well. So the cluster log is uh, opening. It's uh, uh, it's like a 2.49 MB file, so it's going to take some time. Uh, so let's wait for it, even though uh, we will be seeing same sort of uh, message there as well. 
uh, the cluster.log is taking some time. Basically, like uh, you don't look at all these things on the server. You basically take the logs outside and look at uh, uh, on your um, uh, desktop or on a test server. So uh, here we will look at it. Uh, uh, it's a 249 MB um, file, so it's uh, taking some time. So we will uh, look at it like 6.16 PM. That is when the failure, failure happened. Uh, so if you see here, it clearly tells like we have exhausted um, um, uh, the configured number of failover attempts. We have other things also. Um, uh, so we have these messages here. Uh, it basically tells like it has failed, but this is the important thing, which basically um, avoided uh, uh, the automatic failover to happen, and it failed the always on availability group um, uh, uh, cluster role. So let's go to JBSAG1. Let's go to the end, and if you see here, we look at uh, the error. Uh, it's something, some time around uh, 6.16 p.m. So let's look at it one more time. JBS AG2, 6.16.22, that's the time. So let's go back, 6.16.22. Yep, 61622. This is where it is. Uh, let's look at it. So uh, let's look at it. Um, 622. Sit online, JBSAG issued. RCM. So here we are seeing that the pending time mode property has a value of 18,000. Failed to save. Yep, here it is. So it basically tells like RCM group compute failover threshold. It clearly tells like not failing over group JBSAG failover count three. Failover threshold setting is this, and last failover is at this point in time. So it basically tells like we have uh, exceeded uh, the failover uh, value because uh, you remember uh, if you look at the properties there, it was set to two, and uh, here it is showing as a failover count as three, and uh, uh, it basically tells like failed due to error. And uh, this is the error. So it clearly tells like the event viewer logs and also the cluster dot log clearly tells like the failover, the automatic failover did not happen because we uh, crossed over the failover count threshold. And that's the reason uh, automatic failover uh, did not happen. So again, um, uh, what we can do is like we can change this particular value and um, Let's uh, uh, see that one more time, like what we have changed. Go to the cluster manager and then click on the availability group properties and go to the failover. And this is by default two and uh, it is now changed to six. And now let's uh, uh, bring down JBS AG2 and uh, let's see if the automatic failover happens this time or not. Yep, it is down now. What it'll do, let's go to the other node and see if you can see here, the automatic failover has happened fine. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.